Well, I finally made it to my spot out here. It's got a beautiful view. I'm super excited about that. I think it'll be wonderful. There are quite a lot of little flies around here. We are in the spring. I guess it's June right now, but we had pretty heavy snowpack this winter, so it's still melting off and there's still a decent amount of moisture and, and water around. This is my first time out in this area, this specific mountain little area. The roads were pretty decent. Some of them were somewhat washed out uh, with some decent ruts and whatnot, but nothing that I couldn't just drive through, no problem. Uh, there was one significant washout, but it was pretty well rounded off and I had no problem at all going over it. Probably didn't even need four wheel drive, but so I'm glad that I got this campsite all to myself. Uh, I think it'll be a wonderful spot to spend the evening. I've got sunset on Mount, Mount Rainier over there off to the right i can see uh i think that's adams yeah over there in the uh what's it called over there in the gifford pincho so that's beautiful beautiful clear day a little bit of clouds which is okay um, i'm gonna move my vehicle and i'm gonna get myself into a better position and uh that way i can have like a nice spot for the evening and have a nice view in the morning Well, I was gonna check and make sure that I was halfway decently level because it really does not look like I'm level. I've got a back wheel on a little hill there. The front end looks a little low, but I used a leveling app on my phone and believe it or not, it looks like I'm pretty dang spot on level. So shoot, I think that's how I'm gonna be for the night. With this beautiful weather, there's no need for the awning at the moment, so. I think I'm gonna leave it as is, go ahead and get set up for the evening and kind of plan on chilling. This is just an old dog uh, cover for a back seat. Um, I trimmed it up a little bit and repurposed it. I have it jammed underneath this platform that I put together. And uh, all it really does, you know, it protects the back bumper from scratches and things like that. It's a new car, I kind of do care. But it also covers up all this dirt so that when my wife and I are getting into the back, we have a nice kind of clean area. I can sit on it, you know, you can do things. You don't have to worry about getting all dirty. So it's worked out pretty well. The way I have all of my camping gear packed, it's really just perfectly oriented for family camping. And even when I go out solo, it's a lot easier if I just bring all of my totes anyway and just use what I need to. So I've got the back end full of totes. And because I'm sleeping in the vehicle tonight, the totes are just going to sit outside. Should be perfectly fine. They're nice and watertight. And uh, not that it's going to rain. And yeah. funny I actually have my air mattress and sleeping bags and everything for my entire family and I'm not going to use any of it and in here I actually have a bunch of cooking gear and uh, I'm not going to eat dinner I already ate dinner tonight at home so and this is the heavy one it's got all of my recovery gear in it With everything kind of out of the back, you can see my platform and all of my tie downs. These are connected to D-rings and these are cut and trimmed cam straps. So they help keep everything super snug down to the platform and keep it all from moving. With, uh, with it, since I'm gonna be sleeping in here, I'm just gonna kind of get these nice and flat and then I'll roll out my sleeping pads on top of them and I'll never feel them. I'm glamping, so two pads. Up here you can see the platform that I made. This is another one of those dog blankets. I have it running under my son's uh, 
car seat, which is, as you can see, still in here. No need to take it out. Below this, I've got tie downs that tie all the way down to the body of the vehicle. Uh, these bolt in right where the seat used to be. So they're super sturdy, really, really strong. The platform is also a leveling platform. So it levels perfectly with the platform I made in the back, giving me a nice flat surface to sleep on. Two pillows because glamping. My nice old comforter should be plenty warm for this evening. So some of you might not know, I actually have quite a few DIY videos on my channel. One of those DIY things that I threw together a while back now was these Reflectix window inserts. Reflectix is kind of almost like a shiny bubble wrap. Uh, the air pockets help insulate, basically. So in the winter, it helps keep heat in. In the summer, it helps reject it. It's pretty cool out. It's about 65 or so degrees up here. I'm at about 3,000 foot elevation. I got up at 5 a.m. this morning for work, so I'm probably going to be going to bed pretty early. The sun's been setting around 10.30, 11-ish or so, and honestly staying kind of blue and bright out into the night. Uh, it's rising around 4, 4 a.m., and so if I want to go to bed and even sleep in a little, I think these might help block some of the light out, and I think that's what I'm going to use them for today. So let me get these in. I have holes in the tops of all of these. That way I can crack my windows and have some ventilation. These rain gutters help keep water, snow, wind, just anything from getting in the car when the windows are cracked. Pretty handy. So now I've kind of got a creeper van look going, but you know what? There's nobody around, who cares? And I even have one for my back window, but I think I'll put that one in later. For my evening snack, Cheez-Its. And I do have a French press here for some coffee in the morning. And if I'm hungry, I grab the old Chef Boyardee mini raviolis. Fantastic. Some other stuff that I keep in here, toilet paper. This is a uh, little mini passive dehumid dehumidifier that you can plug into a wall and reset. Is it useful? I don't know. Sometimes I like to just leave it in my vehicle after a wet day and uh, I like to think it helps take care of some of the moisture. Sunscreen, 100 SPF. Two headlamps. Some soap for washing dishes. Just kind of some miscellaneous stuff. This is my GS3500, I think. A uh, little butane stove. I've kind of been digging this lately just because of the super small form factor, but I do have a two burner propane that my wife really likes to make uh, breakfast and dinner on. So I might have to start bringing that. Harder to pack though. And then under here, I've got all of our camp kitchen stuff. A cutting board, a spatula, this is just like a wind fairing blocker, folds out. It's actually a splash guard for grease. Pot handler. These are my uh, pop-up mugs, a knife, and then this guy I'm pretty proud of. I went over it in another organization video, but this is a jet boil uh, pan. And I, I like them because they're pretty good. They're a pretty good size and they have a decently high lip. So you can kind of make like, you know, big, thick, messy uh, breakfasts and dinners. And inside of here, I've got a bunch of items that are nestled in. I've got some camp sporks and some uh, whatever these are called, tweezer thingies, some pop-up bowls and some plates. So they all package in really nicely, just like that. That helps keep everything nice and organized. I won't need any of this stuff tonight. One thing that I'd like to show you guys real quick, it's pretty neat. 
This is where I have my water jug right now. It's a five gallon scepter water jug. They're really heavy duty and they work really well. Um, but one of the cool things that I picked up recently that goes along with it is this little water pump. It's USB rechargeable and it's made for those big water coolers that you would see in like an office building or something. But funny enough, it fits on really well onto the scepter. Let me show you. Just run the hose down into it. And it fits on just like that. And it's got a little spigot right there. And you just hit the power button. That's enough. And it just shuts right off. Since I filled up this little pot here to show you guys the uh, water faucet, I might as well make a little bit of tea. I think that'll be nice to have tonight. The cool thing about my little French press here is I keep all of my coffee and tea and everything inside of it. So again, just trying to nestle as much stuff as I can to kind of save space. While that's boiling, let's check out this sunset. While getting up to this vantage point, I stumbled across this weather equipment. NOTA, Network of the Americas. Do not disturb, definitely won't. Hey, National Science Foundation, they helped fund my master's uh, thesis. And then some sort of radar thing up there. Really gorgeous out there. All right, let's get back. Let's see if our water's boiling yet. Almost. So it's actually a little too dark in here right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these Reflectix panels that I put in the windows. Open it up a little bit. Maybe just on this side. And I've got all the windows cracked too, just to give me a little bit of air. Another little gadget that I have that kind of makes camping uh, more pleasant is this little fan light combo um, in the summer it's nice to circulate the warm air to help cool it down a little bit that's what i'll be doing uh tonight uh in the winter or honestly in the summer at high elevation where it's colder it's nice to be able to use that to help circulate the propane heat from our buddy heater and then in the winter winter it can be used to help keep moisture down Alright you guys, have a good night. I'll see you in the morning. Good morning. I'm up. Slept like a baby. I've got my Reflectix panels in the windows. And I can see a little bit of sun. And if I put my hand on here, I can feel the warm glass. So actually, I, I think they did come in handy, rejecting some of the heat this morning. It's about 7.30 a.m. and the sun's been up for a few hours now. So 
the car probably would have got pretty hot boxed if I didn't have those in. Should we see how it looks outside? like a beautiful day i've seen some forum posts where people install like a little button switch that basically unlocks the back door there's some issues with that with uh the people who have um the keyless start so the push button start um i want to show you guys a little trick that i use to get out of uh, my forerunner out of the back hatch so basically with the key in the vehicle i go ahead and i just turn on accessory power do that I'm just gonna hit the button twice like that with power on I'm gonna roll down the back window like that. and then I can reach out to the uh, button just like that and it opens right up and now I can get out all right I think it's time to just kind of clean up my little campsite and uh, make some coffee. And there you go. Nice and clean. Look at these things. They're pretty weird. I'm not familiar with these, but I'm sort of new to the area. I'm from Alaska. And they're like Dr. Seuss plants. How weird. While my water's warming up, I'm gonna go ahead and set up the awning real quick. Uh, this is a cheap Yescom awning. I've had some questions about it. I bought it for $80. Uh, post COVID, it's up more around 180. So the prices have gone up, but if you're gonna buy this, uh, there are some modifications I made to improve it. And I'll go ahead and show you real quick right now. The first modification I made is when it arrived, the bag was set up so that the zipper was on top. All they had to do was slide it out of the channel, the aluminum channel that's on the back, flip it around, reassemble it. It was pretty quick, and in my opinion, having it on the bottom makes a lot more sense for water to drain out and stuff. The thing that I did is I added in these Velcro straps. It has the buckles on the outside, which a lot of awnings don't actually have that, and I kind of like it but it had nothing on the inside. So once you opened it up, this just fell out. So I slid these uh, Velcro strips around in between the awning and the aluminum channel, and now it's held in securely in place. not much point in having the awning up right now since the shade that it's providing is way over there on my engine hood so uh yeah i'm just doing this to kind of show you a few things just like most awnings vehicle awnings it comes with these velcro straps that you can put around the poles the poles themselves are made of aluminum and they just have that kind of twisty spring locker just like most of them do um, the material itself is probably a bit thinner than arb or uh, Smitty Build or some of those other brands, but it works fine. Um, a few of my friends have ARB and Yakima ones, so one of these days I'll do a comparison. Probably the biggest modification I made was replacing these hinge joints. Uh, I replaced the one here on the other side and then for the two uh, vertical legs as well. In fact, I didn't even replace them. They didn't come with this awning. 
uh, there was just a through bolt through the aluminum. And as you can probably assume, that just ripped out like immediately. So these, these hinge joints are from Ironman 4x4. Uh, they fit all of the tubing exactly the same since all these awnings are pretty much, you know, made the same. And uh, that has allowed me to really extend the life and functionality of, uh, of this awning. So that was a big one. So that's about it. You know, not a whole lot of uh, modifications that I've had to make to it. Uh, they were all pretty quick and have really made this thing a lot stronger and more functional than it was when I bought it. So just a few things to keep in mind if you were to buy one of these cheaper YesCom awnings, just like cheap Chinese awning, and uh, you might have to put in a little bit of work to make it uh, as functional as some of the higher end ones. Well, it's a beautiful day. Uh, my plan for the rest of this morning is to explore some of the area a little bit. There's a couple campsites that I would like to go check out before I kind of head towards home. And uh, yeah, the day, the morning at least is kind of mine. Now I've got it all packed up, but even with it packed up and my table stowed away, I've still got my little backup slide out table if I need it for something. If you want to see how I made this, there's a build video on my channel. You're not afraid of pinstriping. For those of you guys who don't know, this plant right here is called Devil's Club. We'll zoom in. I'm sure you can guess why now. Uh, I'm actually kind of surprised to see it right here on the side of this road up at elevation. Uh, typically they exist where it's really wet, like along the sides of creeks or rivers. Um, in my hometown of Juneau, Alaska, there's a lot of this stuff just because of how wet it is. But uh, yeah, kind of a unique experience to get to see some of it out here on the trail. And if you do see it, don't accidentally grab it. Well, this is an interesting find, I suppose. Somebody had a bad day. Can I get around this guy? Let's take a look. Looks like they tried chains. Yeah. Jeez. That had to have been a, a butt clencher. I think if I clear some of that brush off the other side, I can squeeze by.
All right, I got by them without any issues, so that's good. Lucky, I guess, but yeah, he's going to have a uh, an interesting time when he eventually gets somebody out here to help get him out. I've been driving for quite a few miles now through that dense, just overgrown Pacific Northwest two track. And uh, it's getting a little exhausting. So I think this is kind of where I'm gonna wrap up the video for now. The truck is covered in bugs and leaves and tons of pinstriping. It kind of is what it is, I guess, the cost of playing out here in the woods, but I've still probably got maybe another 15, miles or more of trail to get out to kind of the area that I was hoping to exit and then head home um, and I think that's just gonna kind of be for me so unless something crazy happens I think this is where I'm gonna leave you so really thanks for joining me on today's video I hope you enjoyed it if you're interested in any of the uh, DIY stuff that you may have seen I've got plenty of DIY videos uh, on my channel and uh, plenty more of these little outings uh, to come so I'll catch you next time thanks